Good morning, everybody. So today, what I want to cover are the basics in developing a website. Um, on Thursday, we will actually start um, the process of working in Dreamweaver and building a website, just as you see it on the screen right here from the ground up. Um, I hope everybody can see this. Everybody see what I'm looking at here? Um, it's a Green Start, Green Awareness and Action web page. If you can't, please let me know. Okay, so I can make sure that this is visible to everyone. Um, there we go. So it should be, should have that. And that's the uh, Dreamweaver. So, um, Basics of, of starting a web page. Um, I noticed in the enrollment that most of you are graphic design majors. You're in photography or in the art department. Some, a few of you are not. But um, one of the first things that you have to consider when you are designing a website is what's the purpose of it. And for our class, um, since most of you are graphic design majors or um, in photography or in art in some way. That's pretty easy. Um, you know, the, the website that we're developing in this class will be to showcase your artwork, to show potential um, art directors, um, clients, what you are capable of. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. Um, and that leads into who's your audience. As I said, it will be other graphic designers, it will be clients, um, it will be art directors, it will be um, um, a number of people who are interested in graphic design, who are interested in purchasing photography. Okay, it's not going to be the average person on the street. So what does that mean for them? Um, how do they gain access to your to your website to the content of what you're designing that's really critical um, you have to take that into consideration when you're designing websites um, for our purposes because we're at the high end it's really easy you don't have um, most of the people who will be viewing our websites are people who have really good and fast internet connections so the websites and the pages that we design on those websites can be graphically rich. Um, they can be large files. Um, they can include video. They can include um, um, numerous graphic um, enhancements um, in order to um, grab the viewer's attention. And it won't hinder the, um, their viewing um, the viewer's uh, experience because they're going to have, as I said, they're going to have a high, typically have a high internet connection, a high, uh, a fast internet connection. So, but their first experience on um, seeing your website, if you're meeting somebody in person for the first time, will be um, uh, perhaps um, on their smartphone that you'll be in, you know, in casual conversation with somebody and they'll say, well, oh yeah, I'm, you know, I'm a photographer or I'm a designer. And I say, oh gee, you know, well, let's, let's take a look at what you have there. And they'll pull out their smartphone. You know, it doesn't matter whether it's an Android or an iPhone or whatever. Um, and they can take a look at it. So that's why I am, you know, am currently using the 2017 version of um, the classroom in a book series is because the way that this website that we're, we will be developing that will start on Thursday is designed to be responsive. And what that means is that it will look a certain way on a large screen and it may look a little bit differently on a tablet and it will definitely look very different on a smartphone and it adapts to each of those screen sizes. Um, your website recognizes what size screen it's being viewed on and will um, adapt and change accordingly. 
Um, back in the day when web design was in its infancy, that was not the case. It was only designed for, you know, fairly good sized monitors and that was it. Okay, so that's important. You know, you need to ap appeal to your target audience. Who was your audience? How are they going to be viewing your website? Now, on the other hand, you know, if for those of you who are dealing with um, maybe you want to appeal to, you know, sell a product or make sure that, you know, it has educational purposes that for people who have very slow internet connections, well, that will be a different story altogether when you design it, that you're probably going to want to eliminate most of the graphics that we're, you know, including in our website here because it will just slow down the down, you know, the time it will take them to download the page on, on to their browser um, because they're going to have a really slow connection. So that's something that you have to take into account. Um, Maybe you're just selling um, widgets or I don't, I don't know, many, many years ago, people, it was popular for people to, to sell on, um, you know, Beanie Babies or something, you know, um, you know, there are collections on the internet and you could have a little PayPal account on your, your website. Well, maybe the people who collect those don't have fast internet connections. So you really want to minimize the graphics and you want to make sure that the, with a slow internet connection that their website, uh, that your website downloads fairly quickly. Okay. So how can you, you know, where do you start designing the website? What do you do? Um, the scenario is, is that you're going to start with basic thumbnails and wireframes and you're going to create them that way. But today, most of the time, you know, people go direct to laying out a page, for example, in Photoshop. And that's what I have uh, up on the screen right now. Um, this is um, a basic website designed, the one that we'll be doing, you know, building from the ground up in Dreamweaver. But, um, and you could actually work from this and translate it into Dreamweaver, but we're gonna actually build it from the ground up. But this is a good starting point for us a good visualization to be able to, um, to build the website. So you need to start and decide, well, how, you know, what's the size of the website? That's changed an awful lot. Um, back in the day, um, websites were maybe 800 by 600 pixel resolution. That's fairly small. Today, that would be about the size that you would use for a tablet. So that is something that you need to take into consideration. But if we look here, if I go to image, image size, we can see that right now that this is almost 1200 pixels by about 925 pixels. That's a pretty good size for a standard website these days, 1200 by 920 or so. Okay, so you want it at least maybe 1200 pixels wide by about, you know, because websites are horizontal, they're not typically vertical, horizontal. So you want them, uh, uh, the basic design of your website to start off to be about 1200 pixels wide by about 920 deep, okay? That's where you start, okay? Um, the next thing that you need to take into consideration when you're looking at the size, uh, the fundamentals of the layout of a website, you wanna make sure that the, the, there's consistency in the design of your website from page to page to page. It's really um, no different than designing a newspaper or a magazine or a book where there's consistency in the design from page to page to page so it doesn't confuse the viewer. And so with web design though, there's several things that you need to, to take into consideration that when you're designing is that you wanna make sure that there's consistency, especially at the top of the page and at the bottom of the page. Um, these days, more often than not, the navigation goes at the top of the page. It could be at the bottom, not at the bottom, but just beneath the header. 
but the way um, we're designing it, our um, first website in um, um, the lessons is that it will be at the top of the page. And really for most people that works pretty well because um, you don't have to think about, you know, if you're gonna go to another page um, on the website where it's located, you just immediately move to the top and find which page you wanna to go to and click on the link. So in this day and age, the nav bar is consistently at the top, okay? The next important element to a web page is the header. Now that's not to be confused with the head in the HTML or heading. Remember I said that for type sizes, you could have headings from H1 through H6. And there are tags that are associated with that. That's different. This is called the header. And it is a header because it is at the head of your document, typically just beneath the navigation bar. <clears throat> and where what this does is this typically has your logo, which again needs, needs to be consistent, it needs to have the title of your website, something like that, that exists from page to page to page to page, so that the end user, when they're on different pages, are aware that I am still on your website. Okie doke. Um, the next thing that's cons that needs to be really consistent is at the bottom of the page, and that's called, this little green bar at the bottom here is called the footer. Now, each of these elements, the nav, the header, and the footer are all new <clears throat> to HTML5, and they are um, tags that you will be using in HTML5 that designate the different parts of the um, of a web page and they need to be adhered to pretty strictly and they also um, are part of the proper syntax that you use in designing a website. So the footer at the bottom typically gives you um, other information. Remember I said at the top it's going to give you information about company, organization, the site name, things like that. Well at the bottom <coughs> Excuse me. The footer is going to have copyright information. Um, if it's content sensitive um, or date sensitive, the content is, then you need to make sure that you put the last update. And typically, you want contact in, um, information for the webmaster and email address down here so that it's um, easily accessible for the user to see what's going on. Um, you know, to, if they need to be in touch with somebody about some of the content, that's really important. Um, and then everything in between here um, is what you're trying to communicate to the viewer. Okay. Now, another thing about web design, because it is a horizontal format, is that it's fairly common to have to scroll up and down um, to view a page. But what you absolutely want to avoid is horizontal scrolling. That's an absolute kind of no-no, okay? Um, if, if it has to be, it has to be. And that's what happens if you don't develop a responsive website, but typically just um, reduce the size of the page to fit a screen that oftentimes it's, you're gonna have to scroll left and right as well as up and down. And for whatever reason, that's just a nuisance for people. So that's something that you want to avoid at all costs. <clears throat> um, the next uh, important component in web design is that you want a balance of text and graphics. You don't want to um, overwhelm the person with text. Um, it's much harder to read large amounts of text on a screen than it is on a printed page. So you want to balance that. And I think what they have designed here in, uh, for our lessons is a pretty nice balance. Um, one of the other things that you want to take is that the repetitive information, for example, your header, you know, the logo and that sort of thing takes up no more than maybe a quarter or a third of the top of the page. Okay. 
Um, you want to make sure that your home page, which is also called the splash page, um, is compelling, that it really grabs the viewer's attention. And that's why I'm, a, a, especially for those of you in graphic design and photography and any of the visual arts that you minimize um, <clears throat> the amount of the number of images and the amount of content that you have on the splash page, that you want that first image that um, the viewer encounters to be really bold and graphic and to grab your attention and to make them want to click on other links to know more about you and what you do. If you put everything out there at the start, sometimes they're going to go, well, mm, that's kind of nice, but you're going to lose their attention very quickly. Okay. Um, another important aspect of web design, and this is something that um, typically isn't an issue for us anymore because most people do have fast internet connections. But again, that was one of the things that I said you have to be um, cognizant of is that the home page, the entire page should not take any more than 10 seconds to download. <clears throat> okay. And that would be with a phone connection. If it takes any more than that, then you're going to, with any connection, you're going to probably lose the, the viewer's attention and they're going to go move on to something else. You know, and if you think that 10 seconds isn't long, just stare at your screen for 10 seconds and focus on it. Um, and if it takes any more than that, um, yeah, you'll definitely lose viewers. And if you recall the first week of class when we were optimizing images for the web, and I showed you in that legacy feature about how, how much time it would take. And in some instances, on a very slow internet connection, you know, on an old 56K modem, it could take upwards to 20, 30 seconds for that single image to download. Um, that would be a disaster, an absolute disaster, okay? So the next thing um, you need to consider is that you want to maintain consistency from browser to browser because it will be the browser that renders your page. Typically, that's not an issue anymore. Um, for many, many years, Internet Explorer was the dominant browser, but they have not kept up. So sometimes the page that you design um, in our class uh, will not display correctly or it will be a little bit different on Internet Explorer. Um, Netscape used to be the dominant. I mean, that was one of the first dominant browsers. I don't know how many of you ever experienced that. It's gone. Um, today, um, Google Chrome is the dominant browser, and the next up with that is um, Firefox. Some people use Opera. Um, Safari is still one of the major players, but um, I think Chrome and Firefox are the dominant ones. Um, you want to make sure, and that's why we have the navigation at the top, that your navigation links are clearly and consistently labeled. Um, you want to make sure that it's easy to use for your target audience. Um, back in the day when we used, if we wanted fancy looking links, we would have to use images as opposed to CSS to style them. And that could be a problem for people with um, um, who are visually dis, uh, impaired. Um, okay. Um, make sure that all navigation, you know, hyperlinks, navigation hyperlinks work. That's really important. Make sure that it doesn't take you to any, um, you know, blank pages or work in, uh, in use and that sort of thing. Uh, you know, the, in work in progress, that sort of thing. Um, use of um, colors on a page and backgrounds um, should be limited, including text, to maybe three or four colors, and that's about it. Um, make sure that there's adequate contrast between the background color that you're using and the color of your text. Some people like using a dark black or blue or red background or something like that. 
make sure that the color of text that you use, if that's the case, is really light in value so that uh, it can be read easily. Make sure that the colors that you use are consistent. Make sure that the colors associated with them are um, work properly with the target audience or what the purpose of your website is for. For example, if you were um, designing a website for a bank, um, maybe you would, or a cor you know, typical corporate colors are these deep blues and grays and, they, you know, they um, um, denote, you know, stability and conservative, you know, conservatism and that sort of thing. And maybe that's what you want. And maybe for you know for them, but in this case, for example, the green start using greens um, makes perfect sense. Using the fern is part of the logo works really nicely. It has kind of a lively and friendly uh, appearance to it, and you really get the idea from the get go. This is about conserving um, uh, conservancy in some way of nature, and you know making sure that you know, you're up to date on how to uh, properly dispose of rubbish and things like that and what you can do to conserve. So, you know, colors can be an important factor. And I repeat, don't use too many of them in what colors you do use, excuse me, use them consistently. Um, <clears throat> Make sure that, um, and that's what we covered the first week, that whatever graphics you do use, and that includes images, or it could be um, um, graphs of some sort or whatever, make sure that they are properly optimized so that they will download quickly. Um, so that requires that you know the, so the approximate size of the image in advance so that you don't have too large of an image that will be forced to download and resize in the browser because um, that will add additional time to the download time. Make sure that if you choose to use animated images that they don't distract. Um, I would minimize or eliminate altogether um, little kind of herky-jerky animated images from your website altogether. Um, initially, they can be kind of fun, but if they don't time out and if they play in a constant loop, they can become annoying very quickly. That can be true of, um, of audio as well. Um, it used to be the case that a lot of people, especially back in the day when we were using Flash to enhance the design of our websites, Flash, by the way, no longer exists. So we could use Flash very easily to incorporate um, audio, um, you know, sound and video into our websites. Um, but audio and video take a lot of memory. And as I mentioned, audio like animated graphics can initially sound really wonderful, but if there isn't a way for the viewer to turn it off um, or to mute the sound, it can be really annoying after a while. And it doesn't take long to get um, for that, you know, to get on someone's nerves. Um, so what else do I want to cover here? Um, make sure that you stick to commonly used fonts. Um, there are more possibilities now that we are using HTML5 and CSS3, but what um, something that you will um, realize very quickly when we're actually building the website from the ground up is that when you use um, unusual fonts, if the end user does not ha have that font on their computer, then it will substitute it with another one. The browser will substitute it. So very often, and you will mm, I think lesson six, when we actually start to, after we build the basic um, underlying structure of our website and start to add these graphics, that you'll see very quickly when we start to add fonts that we're going to not specify in individual fonts, but font families or font groups. 
um, so that in the, in the event that the end user doesn't have the font, that what will happen is that um, the computer or the, the browser will substitute the next in line and the next, and then it will maybe resort to a generic either um, serif or sans serif font. Um, it should be the case now that we're using CSS to um, style our pages. That you should be able to um, zoom in or zoom out. If you typically, if you, um, and it will enlarge or decrease the size of the font um, as desired by the end user. Um, that's really, really important. If you specify a specific font size um, and it's not overridden by a style sheet, that even on a small screen, it will adhere to that, that point size or that pixel size. And that can um, be a disaster sometimes if you're not careful. Um, Okie doke. Um, make sure that content is organize, organized in a meaningful manner. And that will be the next thing that I should talk about here. And you'll see that in the website that we'll be develop, developing in the lessons is a three column format. Um, typically, um, you're not going to use any more than three columns. In some instances, you may for portions of the page. But this, for the most part, um, is pretty standard. Um, you can have a two column format or a one column format. And you can have all three on the same website. But um, any more than that gets a little bit difficult, again, for the viewer to, um, to read the page. Um, the structure of the page is as follows. Remember I said at the top we have our nav bar and we have our header. And by the way, this is how um, the way that web pages are loaded into browsers is that it goes from the top of the page um, to the bottom and it also goes from left to right. So as we're developing the website, it's gonna load the nav bar first, then the header, and then it will um, load this left section over here, which is called an aside. Asides are also a part of um, HTML5 um, and part of the, the, the standard um, syntax that will be used. And then after that left aside, it will load the main content here, which is the, the core or the body of, of what you're trying to communicate to the viewer. And then it, it will load the right aside here. And then it will load the footer last on the page. So it loads them in those order, in that order, from top to bottom, left to right. And as I said, you can either have a three column format, a two column format, or a one column format, whichever suits um, you know, your website best, um, whatever it is that you're designing. Okay. And again, like consistency really is important. So make sure that you use um, fonts consistently um, make sure that the structure of your page is consistent. Um, make sure that it's free of grammatical errors. Um, I'm a horrible proofreader. So um, that sometimes can be a problem um, for me even, you know, that I have to go back and revise. Um, if, as I mentioned from at the onset, make sure that um, if content on your web page does change frequently that um, you have a date of the last revision or make sure that you have the copyright. Another thing that still kind of holds true in order to um, for the end user to navigate through your website or the number of clicks it takes to get to any one area on your website because you can only view one page at a time. So um, typically, you should be able to, an, an end user should be able to navigate to your website anywhere on your website with, with a minimal number of clicks. Typically, there is a three click rule that within three clicks, you should be able to navigate anywhere on your website. And for our, our websites, that's very, that's usually not an issue. That's not a problem. Okay. 
Um, make sure that your website doesn't include any outdated material. Um, you shouldn't really use things like click here. Um, by today's standards, people should know, um, maybe by using different hover states and things like that, that that is a link and that's what distinguishes it from the rest of the content. Um, so yeah, make sure that you, um, you know, adhere to, you know, ba the basic web standards as I've talked about them here today. So um, if we were to look at this page now in um, Dreamweaver, this is what it would look like. Okay, pretty much the same. But now you can see um, that it's at the elements of it are activated. That when I hover over the nav bar and the links at the top, notice how they change. Okay, they um, have different states, and this one is a hover state. That's important. Um, also, when I resize, and this will pertain to um, what happens when you create a responsive website, this is what it looks like when you have when you view the web page on a fairly large screen. Okay, you see all three columns as it is. And you'll notice at the very top of Dreamweaver here, you notice these, this green bar and then the blue and the violet. Well, these indicate media queries. And so that means that at different, when the page is displayed at different sizes on different media, that it will change its properties. So if I resize this and I go down a little bit, Let's see what happens. Now notice how it changed. It went from a three column to a two column format. And that's done. And this is something that we will do inside um, the lessons when we develop these and we will create our own media query. That it went, that it went from a large screen down to probably a vertical tablet or it could even be a horizontal tablet you know, an iPad or whatever device that you choose. And in order to make it look appealing and to be um, responsive and to make the content easily accessible to the viewer, um, it needs to be reformatted. And if you don't create a responsive website and it just shrinks this page down to a teeny tiny screen, it's gonna be really hard for the viewer to read and they're gonna to have to enlarge it and then it will result in having them scroll left and right as well as top and bottom, and it's going to be a disaster. So there are all of these additional design factors that you have to take into consideration that you don't have to think about when you're dealing in print. So again, as I resize it for a medium or small screen, it goes to a two column. And then when I go down even smaller, now notice what it's doing. It's going all the way down here. And let me scroll down a little bit. There we go. It, I have the little hamburger symbol up here. And this is what typically what you see on um, a smartphone. So your navigation is up here in this little hamburger um, icon. And the rest of it is scrolls down. And you can see that all of it has been properly condensed and formatted for a small device. And again, as it, it automatically changes formatting depending on the size of device that you use. Okay. So that's um, laying out in a nutshell. We will, um, and some of the things that you need to take into consideration. Another thing that we'll be doing later on is that um, near the end of the semester, is um, I will have some videos for you to watch. They're already available for you. Is that if you want to take a web page that was designed in Photoshop and then immediately um, adapt it to Dreamweaver, that can be done. But you need to have, I think, fairly decent knowledge of HTML and CSS prior to doing that. So that's what we're doing here. Okay, I'm going to pause. Um, the recording in a minute and we're going to switch to Wix and show you what you what I've done with mine and um, my website that I'm working on in Wix. 
along with the rest of you. Um, but before I do, do you have any questions about um, what I've covered so far today and some of the web design basics that you need to take into consideration? Anybody? No? Okay. Well, let me um, show you what I'm doing in Wix here. So what I decided, because um, this is an ancillary site for me. So again, you know, thinking about the purpose of my website, it's not my way, web, web, it's not my main website, it's an ancillary website that I will use to showcase a current project that I'm working on. So it really needs minimal content. And perhaps really that's all that you will need for yourself is your um, is your first website that you're designing in Wix. Um, I took the, the single column format that they, um, uh, the template that they made available, and I've added to it and noticed that while it's a single image that hopefully grabs the viewer attention, when I hover over that image, it's actually a slideshow. So they can see a total so far of nine separate images of my um, virtual gallery. That's what this is to showcase for people, which is my most recent project. Okay, so it's really two things in one. It's a splash page. And it's also um, a little slideshow. It's my um, uh, My portfolio of this show, you know, showcasing my new project all wrapped into one without displaying all of the images at once and overwhelming the viewer. So I think this is a good choice. And it would be good for a photographer, it would be good for a graphic designer to showcase some of the different kinds of work that you do. Um, it's, a, it's clean. Um, the black and white format on the one hand looks a little sterile. But on the other hand, if you because you do want to showcase your artwork, um, your design work, your photography, um, the viewer has no other choice but to focus on the image itself and nothing else. Now, for those of you who are graphic designers, who um, maybe your interest is more in print than it is in web design, then maybe you want a little bit more ornate, a little bit more complex design. Um, on the other hand, um, this would still work for you because if you're showcasing some of your artwork, um, some of your designs that you've done, um, they could be done here in the slideshow. Okay, so that simplifies it. And I can go to my about page now. And if they want to know a little bit more about me, here's a background image. Um, it's a little bit different of work that I've done recently, but it gives them my artist statement so that knows a little bit about um, what the purpose of this artwork is. And it also um, tells them in the biography a little bit of history about myself. And then the last thing is a contact page. So it has a little picture of me. I could use another piece of artwork. I don't have to show me. I have my email address. I have a telephone number, which is my office number, and they can get in contact with me here. So this really for this ancillary website is really all that they need to do. Now, if I go back to the page here that, um, come on. Oh, it's gonna, hopefully it's not gonna take too long. This is the edit page on the Wix website. That's gonna take a minute for it to, um, to load up is that I, I didn't delete pages. I just simply rearranged some that they had from the, um, the template and I turned them off in the event that I might use them later on. So let's see if I can bring that back. Come on. Yeah, I wanna to go to the editor. Here we go. So here's the editor. So I wanna edit my site. That's what I want to do. So I'm going back here again. Hopefully it won't take long to load up. 
And if I'd have had it already loaded this morning, because that could be like watching grass grow. Uh, it's going back to the same thing. So, oh shoot. Let me um, go ahead and pause the recording for a minute until that shows up. So here we go. Here's the edit page for this. Now, if I go under the page um, menus and pages itself, you'll notice that there's a whole bunch of other pages that they made available to me. And rather than in this template, and rather than delete them, I just simply went to the right here. And I said that I, instead of delete, I wanted to um, um, turn them off. Okay, I hid them instead. And that's all I had to do. I can always bring them back later on. I also, the um, about or the contact rather was a sub menu of the about page. And I just dragged it out here so that it became its own element. Okay, so if we go back to the home page, we have that. And I got rid of most of them. I don't have to book online. If you have, if you want to book a client online, if you want to showcase your clients, you can do that because this is originally um, designed for a photographer and I'm customizing it for, for myself, just as I said, for a basic um, ancillary website. So I only have three menu, you know, three links here and that's it. Um, and I, I probably will add um, one more page um, and it will, I'll probably base it off the about page and I will um, make it my um, uh, resume or a very short kind of resume page for the viewer. Maybe, maybe not. I mean, I have an extensive one on my website, my personal website, so I don't know. We'll see. But for your first website, really, that's all you need to do. Um, and again, it, it was pretty easy to go back in here. And if I go into menus and pages, and let's just look at, you know, again, the home page again. And then I can come in here, and if I want to change the images, I can, and that's what I did. I clicked there. And you can see that it, um, when we started this template, we only had four images and I added to it. Okay. So we have a total of nine images now and I can continue to add to that. It gives me a space over here to give me a title and I pr probably should refine the titles and the descriptions. Now the title is also that they provide for us is going to be used as an alt tag I should mention to you that alt tags will be important as we're developing um, our websites. Alt tags are used for um, people with disabilities, specifically for those who are seen impaired. If they, if you know, you if you have an image on your page that is important, they're going to have images turned off, and the reader that reads the web page to them it will read the alt tag to them that say, this is an image of my art gallery, or this is an image of a design that I did in um, my 2D design class or something like that. So they'll know what, what it is that's on that page, but alt tags become really important to be ADA and compliant, okay? So that was easy enough to edit. On my about page, um, they only had, let's go to the about page. Um, they had one area here for the about statement. Well, I took this element and I highlighted both of these and I went ahead and I right clicked on it and I um, copied it or I duplicated it in order to create a, the same um, element that I needed for my biography. Okay and then just moved it around. Now this is closer to the WYSIWYG kind of, um, you know, what you see is what you get and something that's interactive, the kind of design that we were anticipating years ago in web design. And um, websites like Wix are really, really useful 
um, and that they are more intuitive and they require that you know less about HTML and CSS than probably you want to know about. Um, and make it easier for you to, um, to lay out your page, um, you know, and customize it to suit your particular needs. Now, right now, if I go to my finished one here, this is the published one that I have. And you can see that because I'm not paying for that, the downside to this is it says this site was designed with the Wix.com website builder. Okay, so that's the price you pay for free. Um, if you choose to use them as a host and pay for their services, then that will go away. The, my personal website, which is hosted by GoDaddy, I pay for that. And that's about $10 a month or you know, a little over $100 a year for them to provide the hosting for me. So if you don't mind the little advertising that they do, then you can maintain a free website. The other thing that's a little bit awkward too is that when you go in here, um, notice that if you wanna to go to my page, it's gonna go, it's HTTPS colon backslash, backslash and it's kirkmillerart.wixsite.com backslash my site, my hyphen site hyphen one. That's how you get to my website. Now, is there a way to work around that to go to something that's a little bit more personal? If you wanna buy a domain name and you want to link it to that and forward it to this page, you can do that. And we will cover that a little bit later this semester. But for right now, um, to tell someone to go to this page is not easy because you have to, if I just put in kirkmillerart.wixsite.com, it will not take you here. You have to put in that little bit of additional information back um, that goes to backslash my hyphen site hyphen one in order to get here. Okay. So that can be an issue as well for people that um, it doesn't function quite as nicely as if I go to this one here. Let me back up a little bit. There we go. That if you put in kmart66.com or if I put in um, Kirk Miller online or something like that, I have a number of these. Kirkmillerart.com. Whoops, I don't want Kirk Miller Art. Wix website, that won't take you anywhere. See, that's part of that problem. But if I just um, go to kirkmillerart.com, oh, because it has HTTPs, sorry. See, that's another thing. I gotta get rid of that, it's HTTP. There we go. It just, it's another name for, for my website that takes you here. But again, because this is being hosted by GoDaddy and I pay them, then I can have multiple domain names that link to this website. So that's another um, negative of using the freebie. Okay. So I need to know from you before we end today, how you're doing with your Wix website. Um, on Thursday, I will begin lesson five and we're gonna build a basic framework um, upon which we will build an entire website. So we'll start with HTML. We will add um, uh, the proper syntax. We will use Bootstrap um, to help us build our, the foundation of our website um, so that it will be responsive and um, we'll go from there. Okay. Um, probably by the end of the fifth week of class, I will post a, a due date. So this is the end. This is the beginning of the third week. So you still have three weeks to build it. Maybe four, even four weeks. Um, it's it doesn't take much time for me to build um, my website because. 
I already have the content um, built. I can glean this content from my personal website. I already have the images that I can um, work from. Um, I already have uh, uh, an about page. I already have resume. I already have those things written. Most of you don't. So it's going to take time for you to prepare, you know, decide on what images you want to use, um, what you want to name your website. Um, if you don't have a logo, uh, maybe design one, a simple one. You really don't need one. Um, you know, if you're a graphic designer and you've already had a graphic design class, maybe you've designed one for yourself already. So that would be useful. Um, write a little bit about yourself for the about page. Um, if you have a resume, that would be great. If you don't, um, for the first website, for the Wix website, um, it won't be necessary. But you do need to write a little bit about yourself. Um, so that the end user, whoever is going to view your website, knows something about you. And the contact page is pretty straightforward, too. Those are pretty easy to do because it's already done for you, really. It's a way for the end user to get in touch with all of you, you know, so they can get back to you. Um, something else I notice about this, too, is this does have, and I don't, I have, don't know if it functions yet, but with this particular thing, I can chat on here, okay? So that'd be kind of cool. That's already built into the template. So I, I don't know if it functions yet or if I need to pay them to host my website in order to have this function. That's kind of cool. You know, it's already built into the template. You know, that would be otherwise difficult to add on your own. So um, there are other sources aside from Wix, if you feel like paying. There is another one that you might look into. Um, and these would be good if you have clients as well, like Squarespace. Um, Squarespace has some really beautiful templates, um, but it can cost between $30 to $40 a month to maintain a website there. Um, that may be out of your budget, but if a client comes to you and wants you a, a, a website designed very quickly, and they're willing to pay that fee, then maybe that would be the way to go. And it would um, eliminate all the, the, the difficult work of building from the ground up using HTML and CSS and using an online, online website builder like Wix, only you'd be using Squarespace instead. And maybe Squarespace would be, or Wix would be suitable for them, but if they paid for their domain name and it was hosted through Wix, you know, then you would get rid of this little ad at the top and you would be set to go. Okay, so um, if there aren't any questions, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pause the recording. Yeah, I'm hopeful that um, today has been a little bit informative into the basics of web design and we will get into the nitty gritty of um, building a website from the ground up with um, lesson five um, on Thursday. And then most lessons will take a day. They could take two, sometimes three days to do. And um, when we reach the end of lesson seven, I will, or near the end of lesson seven, I will um, explain to you how you publish those lessons. Okay. Um, so that all I need to do is go to your website and click on it and I can see your published lesson and then we're set to go. Okay, so if that's it, you guys are um, free to go and I will um, see some of you or most of you, I hope, on, on Thursday. Okay, bye-bye. Unless you have a question, if you do, I'll stick around. Okay, bye-bye.